Let's talk energy now with Nationals MP and former Resources Minister Keith Pitt, who joins me from Brisbane. Good to talk to you, Keith. Have you had much of a chance to look at what the Prime Minister's announced, uh, price caps on coal and gas and, and a $1.5 billion scheme to subsidise power bills? Uh, uh, what's your assessment? Well, we're short on detail, Chris, but Prime Minister Albanese and Federal Labor couldn't run a chook raffle. That's what's coming through to me. Uh, we're now being told we're recalled to Parliament next week. We only left a few days ago. I mean, did they not see the increase uh, forecast in the budget of up to 56% for power prices? Are their MPs not talking to people who are doing it tough? Uh, and I've got real questions on this. I mean, what sort of coal is it at $125 cap? What calorific content? What ash content? Uh, what, what type is it? What quality? The same for gas. So we've seen no real detail apart from a bucket full of taxpayers' money that will be out propping up the states. So why does everybody have to go back to Canberra? What element of the package requires uh, legislation? Uh, well, we're waiting to see that detail, but clearly that's the advice they've been given. Uh, and, you know, once again, why couldn't this be drafted, ready, done while we're all there? Uh, this is another added cost for the taxpayer. Uh, and I heard your opening clips. You know, the, the Treasurer Chalmers, the Prime Minister Albanese, Federal Labor, they're now hoisted on their own petard through their own words. So this will be borrowed money for a, a splash of cash for popularity. Uh, and it's a subsidy. It's not a reduction in electricity prices. It's taxpayers' funds that are going out to some individuals. We get to see all the detail in that as well to try and help them in a time of need, which we were told by the Treasurer was inflationary and a really bad idea. It is just extraordinary. They are making it up as they're going along. You make the crucial point there that, that of course, during that budget, in the budget, we heard about the more than 50% increase in electricity forecast. So nothing's changed since then. Well, they've just started to understand the political implications that they should have announced their subsidy scheme in the budget. Well, that's exactly right. They had plenty of time. I mean, there was quite a few of them wandering around the world, as you'd expect. Uh, but the idea that we now have to be recalled uh, to deal with this issue before Christmas, because people are doing it tough. There's no doubt about that, Chris. Uh, but this, we've seen the comments from the Treasurer and others. This was a horrible idea a few weeks ago, and now apparently it's the right idea. They've had to buy well, off the well, states. Well, let's, let me, uh, just, just, let me jump in there. Let me jump in there, because I, I, I want to get your view on this, because uh, we know it's a shambles. We know the energy crisis is a mess. It's been created by government, state and federal, Liberal and Labor, all, all the rest of it. But we do know that prices are really hurting, and that if you're on a fixed income, especially if you're the, a pensioner or the like... At these increases, at these rates, people are going to be forced to choose between having an air conditioner on or buying their food that week. So do you support these subsidies, as ludicrous as the situation is, do you support the fact that you need to help out some people because these power price increases will really hurt them otherwise? Oh, there's no doubt that, that that will hurt them. I mean, I won't be putting forward the position for the opposition. That's up to uh, Peter Dutton. And as I've said, we've got to see the detail of the actual legislation. But we saw the capacity mechanism What about in principle? Week. What about, did, what about in it. principle? What would you advise Peter Dutton to do to support this sort of direct relief to people, especially those on low or fixed incomes? Well, I'd be doing everything I could to get more supply into the market. Uh, and that was our proposal as a government. Uh, get more gas in the right places, make Victoria actually develop their own, put a capacity mechanism on coal and gas to make sure that electricity is reliable. There'll be blackouts uh, in peak periods. That's what's coming. Uh, and instead, there's an agreement with the states and federal labour to subsidise the unreliable, which still won't make them reliable. It, it's a subsidy for batteries. So let, let's be frank about this. Whereas what you need is reliable energy that can stay in the market uh, and tick up because wind and solar is intermittent. These are yeah. the challenges that have been around a long time. Labor's pulled the wrong levers. Just briefly, what do you think the impact will be on the price caps on gas and coal in those markets? Well, I think there'll be less production, there'll be less investment, which means there's less supply, which will put up the price. That's the fundamentals. But how does the price go up if there's a cap? Uh, well, there'll be, there'll be less supply into the market. The cap is temporary. Uh, you've already had prices set for the first quarter of next year because they had to forecast on what they had. Uh, there will still be price increases for power. I, I can't see this actually making any difference. Most of the Queensland-owned generators are paying you know, very, very cheap prices for coal because they own the mine. What a clever country we are. We've shut down all our cheap, reliable energy. Now, look, we're the mess we're in. Thanks for joining us, Keith. I appreciate it.